The New York Jets released their running back Le'Veon Bell on Tuesday night. Apparently now he has signed with the Kansas City Chiefs, so it's a one-year deal. And in all this whole situation, I see two winners and a loser. Now, winner number one is Kansas City. I mean, they got a, another running back, a player they didn't need, and a really good player who's going to do very good things for them. Um, the rich got richer, basically, when the, the Chiefs added Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell can run the ball really well. Uh, he's very patient. He waits for holes to open up and then hits him really hard. He's a good receiving running back. They could literally, if they wanted to, put Clyde Edwards-Hilaire in the backfield and put Le'Veon Bell out wide at receiver, or they can do a two-back set. There's a lot of stuff you can do if you have Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and Le'Veon Bell. It's kind of terrifying, actually. It, what, you know I, what I will say is that if you want to watch early in the year when the Broncos had both Le'Veon Bell, or what am I saying, both Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon healthy, Melvin Gordon, Melvin Ingram. Melvin Gordon, I believe, is the running back. I get Melvin Gordon and Melvin Ingram were both on the Chargers at the same time. And one's a defensive end, one's a running back. And I, I to this day, I still, like, every once in a while, I go, I pause and go, is that the right name? So Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay were in the backfield. Two good running backs. And the Broncos showed a good blueprint for what you can do when you have two running backs. You can both catch out of the backfield. They had moments where they would send uh, Melvin Gordon out wide on, like, a, a bubble route. And then send Philip Lindsay on like a Texas route where he starts out. The linebacker flows out wide with the swing. And then Philip Lindsay darts back inside on like an out and in. And you can play a lot with linebackers that way. So I am really excited to watch Kansas City and how they use Le'Veon Bell. If, in fact, you can get him in quickly enough to learn the system. Remember, he's got to learn their, new, their offense and get up to speed. So it's going to take a while before Le'Veon Bell has a big impact in Kansas City. But like the last half of the year... Watch out. That's a really terrifying thought. They just added another good running back that they really don't need, who, by the way, can catch passes, and they are the best screen team in the league. That's a horrifying thought. They did not leave, need Le'Veon Bell. Now, winner number two, Le'Veon Bell. He, the dude wants to win. I thought maybe he was going to go to Seattle, uh, but Kansas City makes a lot of sense. He wants to go somewhere and win. Uh, you think about this, the Jets gave Le'Veon Bell a ton of money, and so he's rich. Now he gets to go have fun and win football games in Kansas City. It's unfortunate he had to endure the Jets organization, but Le'Veon Bell is a big winner here. He gets to win, have fun. He endured the Jets, got paid a lot, though, so he comes out all right. And uh, I, I'm happy for Le'Veon Bell. I, we'll talk about more of him in a minute, kind of his weird thought process. But I want to say the big losers here— undoubtedly, are the New York Jets. It makes, I, I don't understand. In so many ways, they're just a big, big loser. And I guess that's funny wording, but they, I, I don't know, man. First of all, your head coach, Adam Case, is an idiot. Number one, Adam Case could not find a way to build an offense around Le'Veon Bell, which is ridiculous given what we saw from him before joining the Jets. He's a good running back. And even there were moments where he saw flashes of, wow, Le'Veon Bell is just the best player on his team after Jamal Adams with no help. And now Jamal Adams left, and Le'Veon Bell was left alone with no help, bad offensive line, quarterback struggling, no receivers. It's awful. And then number two, not only could Adam Gase not find a way to fit Le'Veon Bell or at least build the offense around Le'Veon Bell, he also didn't keep him happy. And so I believe great coaches can manage personalities. What does it say about Adam Gase and his people skills that he could not find a way to manage Le'Veon Bell and keep him happy? Maybe it's just Le'Veon Bell. I think there's a good argument to say that Le'Veon Bell was a problem that could never be solved. But I don't know why. The Jets should have never, ever signed Le'Veon Bell. From the beginning, Adam Gase literally did not want him. That, that's terrible. He literally publicly basically, basically said, yeah, I never wanted to sign him. Like, what? Why would you give him a huge contract? And because they did that, because they were they owed him a ton of money, the Jets also couldn't trade him away. Just lose after loss after loss. Bad, bad, bad decision. And there's not much more to say here other than it's just another example of terrible management by the New York Jets. Frustrating, disappointing. The Jets have repeatedly shown themselves as an inept organization. I don't know who would want to play for them. I don't know who would want to coach for them. The Jets are just a, the Jets are a gigantic mess, I guess what I'm trying to say. 
And it's unfortunate. It's disappointing. It's not good. It's not fun to watch. Now, I will say this. I guess maybe in favor of the Jets. This is maybe the only good thing I can say. In favor of the Jets' cause. I criticized Adam Gase for not finding a way to work with Le'Veon Bell. Maybe it was hopeless. Maybe Le'Veon Bell was not somebody you could work with. And that's possible. Because you got to remember, Le'Veon Bell chose to be there. He signed a contract, a lot of money, and then all he did basically was complain about how he much he hated the New York Jets. And so I got to say, if you hate the Jets so much, why did you sign there? Now, the answer is money. He wanted the money the Jets were offering. But it sounds like Le'Veon Bell wanted the money and didn't actually want to put up at the organization he went to. And you can't have both. You gotta, if you're going to pick a team, pick the team and then deal with it. Make a smarter decision if you really don't want to be there. And if he wanted to win and have a good time, he could have taken a little bit less money and gone to a competitive organization like Seattle or Kansas City from the get-go. Or, I mean, the page. there are so many places he could have gone and made some money. Probably not New England because they are not going to pay anybody, especially a running back. Um, But I I just think it's all weird to me. And a good lesson here, I guess, is that if you're a young athlete, be aware of what situation you're walking into. If you're a young guy and you're in eighth grade getting ready for your high school team, go to a good high school that's got an opportunity for you to play, that's a winner, that's good. I made the mistake one time. I went to a college where the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, they were the same person. The guy didn't want me. And I realized how, you know, in training camp, oh my gosh, why am I here? If the guy doesn't want me at all, I don't know why I'm sticking around. So um, I learned a hard lesson there. When you are picking a team, make sure you do a lot of research about the location, about who's there. Do they want you? Is the culture good? Do they have a, a support around you? There's a lot of factors that go into picking a team And it sounds like Le'Veon Bell either didn't do research or didn't care about the research because he wanted the money. And I I don't know that Le'Veon Bell should have ever signed a contract to go to New York. It was not good from the get-go. It was never good. And I guess in the end, he got a lot of money, so that's a benefit. And he survived. And Le'Veon Bell can go to a good team, hopefully, and maybe win a Super Bowl. So I guess in the end, Le'Veon Bell won, but... I, something isn't quite right about the way that he signed a contract and then all he did from that moment on was complain about how much he hated his team. I just, I know I'm simplifying things there, but it's got to be frustrating. If you're a Jets fan, you're like, dude, why did you come? Why? We let you into our house and then all he did was complain about how much you hated the food and hated the bed and hated the shower and it was too cold and all. It's like, if you don't want to be here, don't be here. And so... Uh, I think the Jets had to release Le'Veon Bell given everything he was putting out on social media and the way he was talking about the team. I'm rambling here now, but I see both sides. But either way, it doesn't look good for the Jets. The Jets are the big losers here. Uh, they look inept. They look stupid. And it's, you know, who the real victims here are, honestly, Jets fans. The, the team made a bad mistake and... If you're a person who's emotionally attached to the Jets, you did nothing wrong. It's not your fault. Your team is just a bad organization, and I feel very, very bad for you.